Hi everybody and uh, thanks for a warm, warm welcome and uh, really great to be in Split. Actually I'm on a holiday so, so this is perfect. Perfect place, just arrived today and uh, really nice to see quite a big number of you here Friday evening. So uh, let's get this done and uh, we go and have a beer. But uh, yeah, uh, I will talk a bit about uh, myself in the beginning, which is maybe not the most comfortable topic, but uh, give at least a short uh, retro perspective. Who am I and uh, what I've been doing before I end up to Croatia last, last spring, year ago. Uh, I'm going to tell a bit how I end up to be an entrepreneur. Then about software sauna, our, our baby. And then uh, why Croatia, which is always the big question uh, I, I hear all the time. And uh, then also a bit... Uh, what I have learned during the 14-15 months by far and uh, maybe if some of you is or are uh, considering to start a own company uh, maybe something you should you should know before doing that and maybe maybe learn from from mistakes somebody else has done earlier but uh, let's great <laughs> all right good Let's kick off. Uh, let's try to keep it kind of interactive. So if you have something to ask, please just raise your hand and ask. Don't need to wait until the end of uh, end of the presentation or talk. But yeah, so me, the crazy Finn. Uh, we can go back to year 1983, uh, Western Finland. And since today, you can call the city of Vasa as a split of Finland. So, uh, but that's, that's not only a nice joke, there is some connection because there, there is a pretty uh, much evidence that Vasa is the most sunniest city in Finland. So that's not much compared to Split, but at least, at least something. But yeah, uh, I was living, let's say, typical uh, Finnish middle class uh, childhood and then uh, somewhere around 92, 94, uh, I got in my hands the first uh, Commodore 64 and uh, also Nintendo 8-bit. At, at that time was a really, really big thing. I wouldn't say that they changed my childhood a lot, but uh, they were a nice addition to it. And uh, obviously technology started to uh, get better all the time, so soon there came Sega 16, Nintendo 16-bit. So uh, that was the first. First thing uh, to technical devices I had in my childhood and uh, year uh, 1998, big year for Croatia, big year for me also. Uh, volleyball was the thing in my life. I was really considering that maybe I should put everything in and uh, try to become a professional volleyball player. My team, let's say now after almost 20 or is it 20 years it's more than 20 years uh, you can say that we won the silver medal of the Finnish junior championship but actually we lost it but uh, that was that was the time when when uh, sports was really really big thing for me and of course then first memory about Croatia so Davor Suker and uh, guys did a really good job and uh, that was actually the first real memory about Croatia and after that uh, I've been always knowing uh, football and good football players come from here. Uh, years passed by, I never became that volleyball player on the top level. Uh, I, I realized that maybe it's better to go to university and try to try to learn something else and uh, let's say that big uh, kind of life-changing moment was January uh, February 2006, I moved to uh, Krakow as an Erasmus student. I was supposed to be uh, half a year there. In the end, I spent one year. And uh, already maybe from that point in my life comes this... I, I like to say always that be different. Be always different. Don't go with the mainstream. Even though whatever people say to you that, okay, yeah, you are strange, you do this. In the end, it's going to be your goal. 
you, you're gonna you're gonna score the goal being uh, different compared to the uh, match. So uh, it started then. I had a chance to go to Bangkok with a bunch of uh, my uh, classmates for half a year, or do the other typical Finnish thing, go to Germany or Spain. But I decided to go to Poland, which everybody were asking, like, why, why the hell you go to Poland? But uh, that was a good choice. During the year, I already realized that after I graduate in the spring 2007, I want to move to Poland and start my career there. Welcome. And uh, yeah, let's say my love towards Eastern Europe started that year. And uh, I never end up right away to, to, to Poland then. Because I thought that it would be maybe good to start to work in a Finnish company in Helsinki and uh, get some experience and probably that will lead you to better position, better jobs later on in Poland. And uh, May 2007, uh, <clears throat> I started my first job after graduating a uh, Bachelor of Business Administration in International Business, HR Marketing. So uh, that was my main, main, uh, main studies. And uh, I started as a talent agent or recruitment uh, consultant in a headhunting company. And uh, today, my best friend uh, and my business partner, Timo Hakkarainen, he was the guy who hired me and he was my first boss. And he said to me that, hey, you need to start to look for uh, Java developers and .NET developers. And I'm like, Java, okay, yeah, that's, isn't, that a, isn't that a coffee? But uh, he said, yeah, go to Wikipedia, read it. If you have a questions, let's talk. You're going to learn it. And from that time, we have a joke, which unfortunately, there is probably some developers here. So probably like you, you keep uh, receiving that kind of emails in uh, LinkedIn every day from <clears throat> maybe not so competent uh, recruiters, which, which maybe I wasn't that time neither. And uh, for some reason, I, I was in touch with a foreign uh, developer. That time, all the Finnish companies, that, let's say that the Finnish IT boom really started Around that time, 2006, 2007, everybody wanted developers everywhere, but nobody didn't want to hire an uh, English-speaking developer because they didn't want to change their uh, daily uh, routines, their weekly meetings. Everybody speaks English, but no, they are in Finnish, so that's a too much trouble. But anyway, so I was talking to some guy and I remember saying to him, oh yeah, you do Java, yes? So from that, uh, it became kind of internal joke which actually you probably see in LinkedIn, you get messages, oh, you do Java, I have a great job for you, please send me your CV. So again, from that moment, realize that be different when you approach people as well. So give a bit more information than just asking, do you do Java? But anyway, 2019, 10 years ago in March, I moved to Poland then and uh, Let's say then, then we can start to look. That's my hometown, Helsinki, a couple of years after studies. Okay, I was spending one year already in Krakow, but I moved to Katowice, let's say Manchester of uh, Poland, and uh, spent one year there in an uh, outsourcing company, speaking Finnish to the client and uh, typing figures to SAP and uh, sending emails, and definitely not my kind of job, but. Uh, Without that, I would never end up to Warsaw to work in a Finnish outsourcing company and start to uh, move processes from Nordics to fin uh, Poland and uh, basically work as a project manager and development manager there. Once, uh, 2012, my ex-company from Helsinki asked me that, do you want to uh, start our business from the scratch in Poland? And uh, I said, yes. It was nice to work with you back then, and uh, definitely we should do that, that in Poland. And I spent four and a half years in Krakow, and uh, it was a pretty interesting time. Uh, went more and more towards engineering and, and IT positions that time, and we're, we were working quite a lot of with Nordic IT companies in, uh, in Poland that time. And uh, 2016 spring, 
Before that already I, I was talking quite a lot of with, with my friends who are working in IT sector. I have a quite, quite many of them, either they have their own startups or, or they are working for other companies in uh, Finland, Sweden. And uh, we were talking about this, that yeah, maybe if you hear something, I would be interested as well. And uh, my that time client asked me that, uh, would you be able to find us a site manager in, in, uh, in Wrocław? And I said, yeah, sure, of course, this is what we do. And uh, during that maybe five minutes call in the half, I said, hey, maybe we should talk about this. Maybe, maybe I should be our new uh, site manager. And uh, it didn't take too long. Uh, I became, became that uh, site manager for them. And uh, almost two years in Wrocław in uh, e-commerce company taught me a lot. Let's say so that that was my first real job in IT. So as, as you heard already, I don't have a technical background, so uh, I come a bit from from different different uh, route to the today where where I am now. So uh, that was a big big thing in my career in in terms that I was really able to get into the tech sector and learn learn more about IT development, or software development, and uh, didn't take neither too long while we started to talk more with our friends that maybe one day we should start to do something our own and uh, what it would be. And then the idea of software sauna was born 1st of January 2017, but we will get back to that a bit later. And yes, a year ago, Fool's Day, I moved to Zagreb. So it's been now a bit, bit over a year. Uh, but yeah, why, why, why entrepreneurship then? I will give a bit background of myself, let's say first, and, and then go there that what I wanted to achieve or what I would like to do as, as an entrepreneur. So actually the area of Asa, uh, Western Finland, that's the most, uh, let's say there is the biggest density of uh, entrepreneurs in Finland and uh, it's kind of in our bloods in, in that area that you are always having your own company or working, whether it's a smaller uh, workshop or, or a bigger factory. There is a lot of international, a couple of big international uh, companies, so a lot of suppliers for them and subcontractors. But somehow in our family there were nobody ever who was an uh, entrepreneur or had had their own company. So uh, let's say that the odds for me becoming an entrepreneur wasn't very high. And also, as a person, I am quite, or at least I used to be, a person who was planning and avoiding risk till a till certain moment. And of course, as, as an entrepreneur, you need to be a risk taker as well. You need to be able to carry the pressure and carry, carry the risk. So uh, with time, I think that I became uh, more self-confident and uh, more, uh, more of a risk taker. But of course, still having a plan and maybe having a plan B behind there. So uh, as mentioned, a lot of friends in the startup scene in, in Finland especially. So I've been able to see what they've been doing and uh, or, or if somebody has started to work somewhere, got some shares in some company, so they became of owner, co-owners. So that was kind of the uh, thing what started to get me interested about being an entrepreneur and working for yourself. Mm. But generally, this, this was the other thing then. Beside the risk, beside the fact that actually you don't have a maybe stable income and, and all this stuff what you get if you're working in a well-established companies or corporates. The other thing was that, okay, now what, what, what should I do then? What, what is the idea? Like, I I'm really admire like today people who come up with some cool idea of some app and boom, suddenly they uh, break down the internet then. So... That was kind of not me, but obviously then with, with, with uh, all the experience 
what I have gained during the 11 years after the studies before last spring. Uh, I think that here in software sauna now, I'm able to combine everything from outsourcing, uh, sales, human resources, recruitment, even some uh, finance things. So uh, that kind of created the whole, uh, whole thing, what, what's, what we are doing today now and why I wasn't then able to make the move. And uh, I believe that, at least for me, I really have to say that I'm, I'm, I've, I take my hat off for uh, those, especially youngsters who, who go directly after the school. They start their own company. They just have the idea. They don't have experience basically on anything and you are learning by doing. So like that's, that's really hardcore thing and respect. But uh, as said, I was a bit more here, coming more as a risk taker, but with the experience, with the network of, uh, of, of all contacts I have, business, business contacts and not only, I was able to take the step. Okay, why, why then, like what I want to achieve, what I want to create as, as an entrepreneur? <clears throat> I'd be working uh, in five different companies, twice in once during that 11 years before, uh, before we started uh, Software Sauna. And uh, there's been a lot of great managers, a lot of great uh, people I, I've been able to work with. But like I said, okay, I was studying HR, uh, human resource management, and because I, I, I have to say that I have been lucky. It's not like this every Nordic company either that, you know, you have a great people. They're only, they are treated very well and uh, there is only great managers. No way. But I've been lucky that I was always working in such a company where we're really inspiring uh, managers. And basically you were always given freedom. So even though like this is my first proper startup, the one I was working in Poland, uh, Krakow, five years, the biggest Finnish recruitment company. Basically, I was just given the money of the company and do like build the company. So that was already kind of, except that I knew that I will have every month my salary coming and, and, and so on. And pretty much the same thing in the IT company as well, that they listened to me. They said, you, you've been long there, you know the market, you know what we need to do you execute that. And that's that's pretty cool thing that you are able to do what you believe is the right way to do. And uh, that's the thing then that I'm a big fan of great management and, and, and I just believe that the only, only asset for your company what matters is people. So uh, I really want to build, first of all, the idea to start sauna, build the workplace where you are never pissed off. Of course, may, maybe some Mondays you might be pissed off to go to work. Uh, but that's like the main, main first thing that people would like to come to work there. And, and they would feel that great, it's Monday. I'm going to see my good colleagues and, and we are going to do some meaningful job. And they don't need to think about that there is this goddamn boss who is pain in my ass. So no. Make difference and, and do good for people. So not only that we as a company would take care of our people, but generally like what we are then doing so that it would have something meaningful. And uh, also if I go a bit deeper in, in sauna wise, make difference also that the idea, what we are doing, that's pretty new thing, what we are especially going to do, or we are doing in Finland and uh, also in Nordics. Soon we will go more, more to that, what we actually are doing. But uh, be different once again. And then, of course, in the end, that I'm able to take responsibility. I'm able to basically, let's say, do whatever you want. Like, if you have a crazy idea, you don't need to approve that from somebody. You just do it. You don't have to be politically correct. Either it's failure or it's, it's success. So basically that's, that's the main thing I think that what keeps, keeps you going and gives a lot of uh, motivation. <coughs> oh.
OK, uh, this might be maybe the longest part. I will give you a bit story behind how uh, software sauna was born and, and, and why and so on. <coughs> I mentioned there earlier that I visited uh, Kreis the first time 2013, Dubrovnik split. <coughs> Next year, summer, many other locations plus Zagreb. And yes, I was living in Poland and uh, like you know, like I know now, just driving from Zagreb, the motorway is full of Polish cars. So every, all the Poles come here for holiday. I don't blame. But I was blaming and I was wondering the why, why, like crazy. So yeah, that, that's the country where there's great football players. 2013, let's give a shot. After that, I think we were like less than maybe five days all together. Dubrovnik split. I said, yeah, let's go there next summer. Now I, now I know why they keep coming here. So basically started to come more often. Of course, coming from Finland, I'm a great hockey fan. So uh, Medvesh Chak Zagreb was playing KHL. I went to see all the games they played against Helsinki. So I started to visit Zagreb more and I, I met some local friends. I was more in love with your country. So uh, that's basically how, how it kind of started to happen. And uh, during the time passing, I was really uh, trying to find some, some Finnish companies also that who are working here, but they are not too many. So actually in the end, the only chance to move to Croatia was to come up with something something on your own. Uh, we had those discussions going on with guys that what should we do one day, maybe, yeah, maybe when I'm 40 or something and well financially established, like a lot of discussion. But autumn 2016, after I started in IT company working, uh, it started to be maybe a bit more clear that, hey, maybe this is the way that uh, there is, I mean, there is, there is a lack of great developers everywhere, but uh, especially in Finland, Nordics, there, there is a huge lack. So, uh, like this, hey, why don't we do this a bit differently? I was already seeing in Poland that time that, okay, Polish companies were selling to Nordics, but uh, once again, all those small things, bad management, no local contacts, so on, so on. Hey, we have all this. Let's, let's make it different and let's change the market. So that, that was the idea. And once we got the idea, I was like, hey, well, yeah, but okay, what about the name then? Like there are so many uh, different names. I was working in Soltec. There is a Solinor, there is a Solita in Finland, like all, all semi big uh, or very big IT companies and, and so on, the list of names. Like what's gonna be that? And I don't lie to you that we were in sauna. These are actually wood, wood for the, the real Finnish uh, woodworm sauna. And uh, we were with Timo, my founding partner, sitting in sauna, having a beer. And uh, because I like generally love sauna a lot, somehow it just came there. Software sauna, let's check the domain. And it was free, but we waited until the next morning when we uh, book it then. And uh, that was it then. But okay, it was still somewhat the uh, like, okay, yeah, maybe we do in a few years that. But New Year 2016-17, I was in Zagreb and uh, January 1st, after having a dinner at my, my local friends, I went to one cafe bar. After a few rakias, I started to talk. Like basically in the bar was me, one other person and the bartender. And uh, he was the owner of the bar. And he was some uh, ex C level guy from uh, Harvatsky Telecom. And Okay, I told my story. I told that I'm interested to start IT company, maybe in Croatia. He told his story, told this, that he burned out and went to travel, opened a small mobile app company and so on, so on, and this coffee, coffee place. But he wrote behind a receipt 
the salary level of uh, developers in, in Croatia and uh, basically let's say quite similar than in Poland but that was like the thing that okay Timo I'm writing in WhatsApp that we're gonna do it here and goddamn he answered right away that we're gonna do it and well I told that shit he said yes we need to do this give me one more travaditsa that's it so uh, 2017 market research and uh, 2018 last year we, we, we started so basically in software sauna uh, beside me Timo is uh, other co-founder and basically because he was working and is still working in Finnish IT, IT companies so uh, he has a very good con connection connections there and uh, he was supposed to help us to find uh, investors then that how, how we can start everything and uh, basically we had already uh, some private people from our network and uh, we could we could get what we wanted by by uh, that option but somehow we started to talk with guys from uh, talented and uh, talented is kind of Finnish version of top tap but not only that they are dealing with uh, freelancers but they do a lot of direct recruitment but also in a different way that they are not headhunting anybody they don't send you LinkedIn messages basically they do so that you can approach them and apply to their network they do code review for you if you are accepted you can then tell them that hey find me a new job and only the companies also who are their clients they are in the network they are verified they need to be recommended by a few developers so that's the reason why we went with talent that they have today over 140 clients in Finland starting Norway now some other European clients around Europe and uh, so basically the network what they can provide us plus then the verification of the uh, quality of our developers so they we do they uh, code review to all our candidates so that's kind of proof to our clients also that especially Nordics that hey they are checked by the Nordic uh, partner this is a proof of quality for you so what we do web development at the moment we are going to get the first uh, mobile devs now during the autumn and uh, basically we focus JVM uh, bytes on we are going to move towards uh, .NET as well now and then generally newest JavaScript and uh, and actually it might be interesting thing that probably our first uh, First mobile developers will be uh, doing Flutter, which is not very big, big thing in Croatia yet. So uh, that, that might be a very, very interesting uh, initial there. But okay, the idea of the company then, yeah, to be one random uh, digital uh, software development agency, not quite. We want it to be, I want to be something different, of course, here for people but especially then also like how how we are perceived on 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 the markets like Finland for example that what we can offer to the clients how, how we can be different so yes just new t-shirts came from the print yesterday so I had to put it there as well but that's like the whole whole thing shortly uh, we really put focus on finding the best developers only okay we are we will go maybe later there that has everything gone as, as we've been planning yes we are much smaller at the moment as we were as we thought that we would be but main thing is that we are only hiring uh, senior and experienced uh, developers full stack developers mainly but also front end as well now mobile devs mm kind of self-driven self-managed organization we don't have a project managers we won't have a project managers we won't have a team leaders because I believe that when you put enough senior people who are wise enough who can communicate with each other they don't need anybody to manage them generally so they they know their job 
they know what, what they need to do while they are communicating directly with the client without any bottlenecks. We believe that that's the way how we can deliver a very great quality to the clients. Uh, and basically then, yeah, no, this is something like, yes, we want to be at least the best working place for those developers who are working for us. But really, this is the main thing what we want to uh, go more and more deeper into. So like truly agile working methods and uh, follow, follow, uh, follow uh, those uh, principles and, and clean code is the, the like really high top, top priority for us. Mm. But also then like we, we, we really want to create the place looking like the people who are working there that okay yes I'm the owner, I'm the founder, I'm the whatever. I'm, I'm just the guy who is enabling everything and if the guys need energy drinks or bananas I'm the one who will go to shop if, if, if nobody else is there and uh, my job is to get them interesting clients, get the right people on board and make them such a workplace where they have fun, fun at and they can do some cool stuff. So maybe that's the summary of the Nordic twist. So totally flat organization. People are <laughs> not forced to tell what they think, but at least they are advised and asked to, to say what they, uh, what they really think and uh, how they see that things should be done and what's wrong, what's not, what's, what's cool. Uh, so basically empowering people, giving them freedom and then also responsibility. Okay, uh, maybe some, I could mention like generally some, some, some clients, uh, probably domain wise, the coolest uh, thing so far who we are working with is the number one or the hottest Finnish uh, startup called Vario, means uh, shadow in English. They are the first company in the world which is producing uh, the human eye re resolution VR headset for ma mainly uh, professional use. So basically the headset is $6,000, uh, $6, but basically I put it on, I see everything as, as in reality. So uh, we are building an Electron uh, kind of remote controller for, for that system when you plug in it in. Mm. We are working with a couple of agencies. Basically we are talking with every agency, a bigger agency in Finland, but Working with a couple of medium-sized agencies, we have a common project together with them. And probably that's something we are going more forward also, that we will have a bigger portion of uh, tech guys here. But still at the moment, this is the one main reason when we come to the lesson learned, that the Nordic market at the moment, especially Finland, Sweden, it's very much focused on site working. So that's also the thing why I'm saying that we want to teach also the market. We want to change the focus that, you know, you can have as good, if not even better developers somewhere working remotely for you. They don't need to sit there. The difference is only that, okay, they are not sitting there every day with you and they don't speak Finnish. But that's like what we try to teach the client as well. And time will show. I'm very positive that's gonna be a good, good, good success, but, uh, yeah, so uh, basically we don't have at the moment any, any, any focused domains. I can see that there is a lot of uh, things going on in, a, let's say, health tech side. And, and we are talking with many companies there. So uh, that might be something, something really coming up, come that maybe, maybe we could do a bit more focus that sector. But generally uh, we cooperate with different agencies, bigger ones there, uh, kind of hybrid teams. And then uh, product companies generally, like who doesn't necessarily have IT as their core business, but a big important part of their business. As well as, of course, all kind of software companies, plus then the startup scene, which is obviously very big in, in the Nordics generally, but uh, Finland now as a main market at the moment, there is a quite a lot of potential there. So. Uh, that's, that's now something that we will start to look, look much closer. Okay, why Croatia? That's like the big question always. Uh, 
is Morten from Get By Bus here? No, I, I saw his uh, video and he was also saying that, yeah, everybody asked, why, why Croatia? You are crazy. Why, why you went there? <clears throat> yeah, crazy or stupid, I, I don't believe. Like I said, be different. So, uh, okay, I told already the story that I fell in love with the country and uh, I really think that you have the uh, most beautiful nature here, if not in the whole world, at least in Europe. And there's a great people here. I really like, let's say you, I really like Croatian people, but uh, okay, we could go more in details into the stereotype of Finn or stereotype of Pole or Croat. I think we have a still, uh, we are not Slavic, but we have a bit the same melancholy as, as you have. We also like to complain, not that much though. Uh, we love coffee. And when I moved from Finland to Poland, thing was that uh, Poles are more open, they are more warm than Finns. But once I moved here, I think you guys are one step ahead, Poles also. So that's, that's why it's good to be here. And uh, me as not being a typical stereotype introvert Finn, it's a good place to be. I can talk to somebody actually if I'm alone in coffee shop or, or in a bus station. So they don't watch me that who are you, why, why you talk to me. Uh, but yeah, of course, the business wise for us, okay, why not Poland, for example, where I spent that nine years? It was quite obvious that it's not going to be Poland because yes, they are 10 times bigger than you, eight times bigger than uh, Finland. Uh, there is everybody. If we think about tech sector, there, there are everybody. There are everybody from uh, US, Nasdaq companies. There is everybody from Nordics, Germany, so on, so on. The market is totally overheated. I would never invest there. In, I mean, my personally, I would never open the company there. There are great developers, great engineers, but to start something, try to be different, way much harder to work, work your uh, way up. And then the other thing, if I say, Nordics, if I say in Finland that, hey, we have a company in Croatia, this is the first thing what they think about. And the wine, oh yeah, beaches, sunshine, only positive things. Combining that with kick-ass developers, that's it, that's it. So that was also the main thing. Of course, it's a EU country, you are located well here in the region. Also com thinking about maybe future expansion, great place to be here and the surrounding countries not very far away, few, few big uh, tech cities. Well-educated population with crate. Is it wasted potential or, or potential? That's a good question. I'm now referring to this, that a lot of people are leaving, but uh, I think tech sector still uh, does very well here and uh, has a great potential. Of course, we need more investment here as well. Maybe Tony, Tony knows more about this generally also in, in, the, in terms of split. But Zagreb tech scene is really much growing. Uh, the same what I have learned is, is here as well. And uh, just uh, maybe, maybe there is something that also the government or the, the politician side needs to do to make Croatia more uh, attractive in terms of uh, investing or starting our own companies. But uh, generally also saying that the grass is not always greener on the other side. So uh, there, there is a great potential in Croatia. And uh, that's, that's why we, uh, we ended up here. And uh, I'm, really, uh, I'm really happy to be here. So uh, I wouldn't be able to choose, choose better. OK, lesson learned. I was referring a few times to already that Maybe not everything went as, as we were planning. And uh, okay, let's go that a bit deeper. But so first of all, of course, as you start to work first time on your own, there is nobody telling you what you need to do, when you need to do it, but basically, uh, you're going to find it in front of you if you leave something unfinished. So uh, 
you learn a lot about yourself as well, definitely. And uh, I have, of course, learned a lot about the domain in terms of IT. I can't go under the hood. I can't start to talk about with you about the syntax of uh, Java, but uh, I can talk with you on the, on the upper level, definitely. And when I'm meeting CTOs, CEOs, mostly, no problem. But that's why the one thing you always need to hire better and more wise people than you are. That's why I have my developers. They talk with our clients once, once we need to go deeper. But yes, I have learned a lot about IT in general, about people as well. I've been working those couple of years in Poland with the devs. There is some difference between Croatian and Polish devs as well, of course, but also about clients. I mean, you just keep amazed and, and being learned about the clients, but that's, that's obviously a thing in any business that uh, when, when you are dealing with people, be aware, be ready and, and make always sure and it's still not sure in the end. I also learned a bit more patience. I'm, I'm not the, maybe, that's not my uh, strongest point generally, but uh, now I have learned it a bit. And uh, I have also learned a bit more self-respect in, in terms that last year we were really like thinking that, okay, we're going to be probably like 15 by the end of the year or within a one year, we're going to be 15, maybe, maybe even more. And uh, yeah, things didn't go that way. And this is not now actually the, the fact that it's not a problem with recruitment, but it's been mainly about the sales. And, and I'm being quite harsh to myself that, okay, we are not hitting the targets. But then Timo also said to me that my business partner that, you know, you started a year ago from scratch. You've never been in Finnish IT sector. And look what we are having here now. We have already done over double uh, turnover compared to last year company's been totally profitable this year every, every month and things really go good good direction new dev started monday so uh yeah if you start to think about that like retro perspective yeah i think uh there wouldn't be too many things who would come to christ and start the it company from scratch and 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 do what i have been doing with with help of great, great partners and uh, having a good people around me. But uh, still, yeah, be patient and be prepared because things never go as they are planned or as you plan them to go. So obviously with the sales thing, it's that I keep traveling every month to Finland, except now in July. So I've been already seven times this year. You just need the face time with the client. You need to be patient. You need to... You need to have a lot of leads, a lot of uh, work there before, before you are able to close those deals. And especially, as I said, that the market is perceiving a remote work still a bit something uh, not so useful thing, everyday thing. Uh, yeah, like I said, you need to work hard. You need to work hard. You need to dig deeper and... Uh, also see the big picture and the long-term plan. Like, okay, if we would be 20 by now, it would have influence to other things. We should have hire more salespeople. We should, it, it comes like, especially if things come too fast, that's one of the, actually the reasons why many startups fail, that you don't have the foundation, you don't have the finance there, and then you need to quickly try to find new, new uh, investors to keep your cash flow uh, and generally the cash pile of cash big enough because, okay, you hire more people, more bigger costs. But uh, if you are going to start to plan one day a startup, be sure that you have a proper calculations also long term. I mean, that's never and even Scenario, scenario one, two, and three, or A, B, C. Not only the perfect scenario, because most likely that's not going to happen. Definitely invest in the right team. I mean, okay, people who you are working with, consider who, with whom you're going to start that. Usually, let's say tech companies, 
the typical story is that there is a bunch of developers, they start that. Uh, my friend uh, nowadays, Londoner Michael Andersen, who, who was here giving, giving his speech also during spring or winter time, he also mentioned about this, that he had the developer background. And when the team was growing, suddenly like, okay, I need to lead the people. I need to do the finance, I need to do marketing and so on. So be sure that in your team, you also have different skills. Because, okay, I can't write code. Developer maybe doesn't want to do the sales or, or check the finances, think about the marketing and so on. So you need to have a different skill set which is basically making the whole big, big strong team then. And that's also the one thing for us. We didn't have that. Maybe we were expecting also too much from our investor, that we would maybe get more clients through them and everything would be just easy and I could come to sail to split every weekend, but that didn't happen. Obviously, I didn't expect to sail every weekend, but uh, I think that's also a very good thing now thinking about one year later because now already this this time I can really take July easy whole Nordics are on uh, holidays our developers all have at the moment uh, projects so basically uh, no emails coming no calls coming our people can have holidays and I can really have a stressless uh, July and once Finns come back on the from the holiday Two first weeks, August, I'm going to be there. So uh, if things would have gone too well, would I have learned what I have learned by now? Probably not. But definitely the thing, if you start something, okay, depending what is your domain, what is your business, it, it might be a totally different story if you have a product. But our service business, so especially if you do service business, make sure that you have some anchor clients. I had first two devs uh, sitting on the beach for months. They were doing tutorials and, and just waiting me to close the first project. That cost you a bit lot, a bit money. So that's a very big lesson learned. So e even by having a one client for those two guys from the beginning, last year figures would have been much better. Croatia, always people are asking me, yeah, yeah, but this is everything is so bad. And, uh, you know, I mean, okay, nine years in Poland, not too many things could shock me. So uh, that didn't happen, definitely. And I think that in many uh, Central Eastern European countries, Southern European countries, uh, the bureaucracy is, is pretty much the same. I mean, it exists there, but so it does in Finland as well. I mean, again, it's the same stuff, different color, uh, different countries. So it is there everywhere. And things went pretty easily. I mean, opening the business like that. Of course, we had a good lawyer, but obviously, uh, especially as a foreigner, no, what can you expect? You need to hire a lawyer. And uh, otherwise, Personally, of course, that experience from Poland, it would be totally different if I would come from Finland here, because then everything would be totally new, but like nothing. Yeah, you need to do re a lot of regi uh, papers, registration, signatures, stamps, and that's it. Maybe, maybe just like some highlights. Yes, there is a quite high uh, employer cost and, and your uh, personal taxation, that's something that if Croatia wants to be more attracting uh, foreign investment or generally also local entrepreneurs, they should do something with this. They should definitely do something with that. I think there is now some changes, but like first thing, I've, I, got, I went nuts because I was buying nuts and bananas and, and some drinks to our, our guys and... Uh, <laughs> our accountants, yeah, you need to pay taxes for this. Like, I need to pay taxes if I want to buy some refreshments to my uh, people. But I guess there is now some changes going on also there. So I hope, okay, we are not buying that many bananas that it would put us to uh, bankruptcy. But, but yeah, but also in terms, if, if you're going to do business still, 
have at least some friend of friend uh, who who is a lawyer or something and and have a good accountant. But uh, maybe that's especially good note for foreigners if if they want to want to start the business here. So basically, I have learned something else than only making strukli, and they were really good ones. We we, we had a team building two weeks ago uh, in. Uh, Zagoria and uh, we did some strictly and that that was pretty uh, amazing job what we did so but yeah I think uh, Question. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hope next spring I mean because that was also the plan this year we were supposed to have office here we don't have the office here yet. But hopefully next year a small office, especially because I have promised to so many Finnish clients that, yeah, come to work with us. On the splits, you know. So I, I, need, to, uh, I need to make that promise true. So uh, I hope next year. I mean, of course, that would be the ideal thing, that I would be half a year here, half a year in Zagreb. We're locked in the room here. So, more questions. What kind of projects are you working on? Uh, okay, let's say that generally, uh, like I said, no certain domains. Usually when I go to see clients, possible clients, I come up with that case, possible case to our people. And I'm asking our devs, do we want to do this? Is this something you want to do? So, at the moment, for example, the we're working with the finance forecasting system. Uh, mainly we do the front end. It's actually a huge, huge front end project. Uh, Marco, our lead developer there, he's working there. And the client, that's, that's actually exceptional Finnish multi-site uh, client. They have their own office in India, about 10 devs there. They had us, they had own guys in Finland, plus some freelancers. And in the end, uh, we started last August. And now it seems that Marco is going to work with, with his colleague uh, until uh, end of the year. And it was supposed to be half a year. And now it's going to be one and a half year. The other cool thing is that actually, let's say that they were a very waterfallish company. So, uh, and Marco is, he's going to kill me. I, but I'm, I'm, I like to say that he is the evangelist of truly agile uh, way of working. So uh, he's been really able to influence the client and they've been, observing the, uh, let's say, knowledge, how, how to work more agile. And uh, he's leading the Indian team. Like, okay, we are external partner, but we are leading the internal Indian team and basically coaching .NET developers to become uh, Angular devs. So that's been pretty, pretty cool. Uh, they are updating the whole platform from Silverlight to Angular. We are building uh, one uh, together with other agency in Finland. It's their own IPR, also they do it together with the one medi medical company. Uh, we are building an e-commerce platform for uh, pharmacies. Uh, that's uh, a, a VR headset thing I mentioned. We've been doing some marketing stuff for a global uh, consumer brand. I, I can't say more. Uh, like. Actually, surprisingly, a lot of stuff front end. Even though we have more, most most of the gals and, and guys who we have, they are full stack. But mo mostly front end so far. Mm. Yeah. But like also the thing that usually we try to get like minimum three months. But now that it's been again like yesterday, I heard we have one client through Finnish agency in Berlin, and it's a big e-commerce platform so it's supposed to be three months yet another three months and now they ask already that even the three months will end in october that would you like to continue afterwards so that's of course a very nice uh, way way or of course business-wise good thing but also it shows us that we are doing things right yeah we have at the moment Six devs, uh, four clients. 
obvious like we have those cases that we have one p but like you need to start somewhere generally we are talking quite a lot at the moment with possible clients that they would start with three to five people teams and even growing up to 10 but that would be then of course like strategic partnership and of course that's where we are aiming but like I said again you need to start somewhere and uh, if we at least are able to choose cool stack and domain it's fine that it's a one person team but obviously it's always if you work remotely it's better that you have a two person on site but you said like you didn't have anybody to manage your team what would happen if your team would grow and I don't know who would manage it because manage is a bigger project than how you think to do it it depends the case but most of the cases at the moment and and how I see that's also difference at least in, in Finnish but also also what I now know from the Swedish market that more, more and more t uh, clients like if they are in software development themselves or software business they have their own teams or it might be also like consume here but they have like 15 their own devs they have their own architects or so on and then they are buying guys from uh, three different uh, agencies and suddenly they have a 50 people working there and they are working under the client's management usually so that's a one option but also depending like some of those companies who I'm like benchmarking we work with with in Finland the agencies many of them have this model that you are self-organized so if you have a bunch of let's say you have a three seniors two mid-level uh, dev team they choose that okay somebody is kind of not a project manager, still hands-on, but maybe using 10% of the time just allocating something. So that's kind of the way also we, we want to go. Do you have any problems when you come to Croatia? No, actually. Beware, I understand a lot because Polish, but uh, so yeah. But I promised actually also that give me two years and now I have a, what, nine months time to, to two years. I'm, I'm not going to make that. I've been a bit lazy, but uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's always then then, then then no problems, yeah. No, but uh, I want to definitely do that because Polish helps so much. But I also forgave myself already that I said okay, first year. But that's also the lesson learned. Like those moments when things don't go right, it's not a cool thing to wake up two o'clock in the morning and okay, you, you might have a bit problem to breathe. You go to take a glass of water, you just can't wake up because you are thinking about, oh, people have a child, children, they have a, you know, I'm, I'm, give, I'm paying their checks and, and so on. So it's a big responsibility and that comes already with the small team. So it's, it's not always easy thing. But then again, when you can work that out, it, it really gives you a boost. So uh, that was the one reason I quit my uh, online Croatian studies and I said that if I can't make this thing happen, work, there is no reason to learn Croatian, so that can wait a bit while. But like generally, I'm, I'm really surprised compared to the country where I come from recently. Without Polish, your life would be much more difficult. And here, the level of English is, is just amazing. Like even in the state offices or tax offices, that's at least in Zagreb. So that's, I've, been, I've been very positively surprised. More, a few more. What's the sentiment about taxes in Croatia? Because there is like a, many more countries, I would say nearby, that are more interested for tax reasons. You mean tax reasons? Tax reasons, yeah. They were lower than in Poland. But okay, I mean, okay, yeah, I know Bosnia has lower or uh, so Bulgaria or something, but obviously, like I said, EU country, the country brand. So, and of course, like I wanted to be here, but if, if the market research would be completely opposite, we, we, we should look for the other place. But there were enough good reasons to be here. So that's, that's why I'm happy.
in tech? I think. I think there here are really, uh, really uh, talented people. So uh, def definitely, that's the one thing. And obviously, like if more and more comes, this is a small market. It will be saturated. It will be overheated, maybe then again. But. Uh, Of course, in, in that terms, it would be then cheaper. I mean, obviously, it would be cheaper. Or from but Poland, that probably also Poland in terms that the, the salaries are rising a lot. And uh, of course, they're going to raise here as well. But still, then we come here because the employment costs are pretty high already. So there is kind of limit at the moment. Of course, you can use Obert nowadays and, and play, play with that a bit. But... Uh, that's that's but okay then the other hand at the moment like how it is in poland people are changing jobs like that only because of small amount of money because you just have so much possibility it's not good for the business is it good for the people i'm not sure of course raising salaries for people is always good but in the end pe companies quit penetrating the market and, and so on so yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely so that's why also like, okay, us, why, like what we try to be, and especially like now in Zagreb, like what, what we try to do things differently. Yes, we could do the same things and we would be still very different in Poland. But the fact is that there is so strong uh, own uh, startup ecosystem already and like all those foreign, so we would be just time. But here we were immediately in, the, that's from, uh, I don't remember now the, the magazine. That's the we were in like five different uh, newspapers. Just contacted me. Oh yeah, Finn is invest. Or Finns are investing in Croatia. Like big news, and that's that was a, that was a really good thing for us. But uh, yeah. that's the thing. Like I mean, I'm amazed. I don't. Like why people are leaving from example, from here. Actually, I guess the salaries are a bit lower here, not big major difference compared to Zagreb. But let's say that if we pay for a senior developer uh, employee agreement, uh, no, usually like, okay, top, top 16 to up to 19,000 net. What's the difference then, for example, if, okay, what, what do you get with that money here? That's like 2,300 euro, 2,400 euro net. You probably get six, maybe up to uh, seven, seven. Okay, in some cases, maybe seven in Finland or Sweden is a bit, let's say six, but not, not in all companies. That, that's kind of like you find the right spot there. But if you go a bit bigger companies, then they are probably like five to 6,000 euro. But then you pay 30, 35% tax. You want to rent an uh, apartment in Sweden or, or, or Finland, it's like minimum 1,000 euro, it's not furnished. <laughs> you need to go to Ikea and buy the stuff and like all this, the food, everything. So in the end, what's the difference? The weather sucks there. So, so like, I mean, I, I, I left and I, if somebody is going abroad, I'm always saying go. You can always come back and actually you should go abroad. And, and, and see a bit different culture and learn something. But then like if, if also like a lot of maybe different professions, I a bit understand it, but also in IT that like, it's not so green there. You are not gonna, or maybe in Germany, somebody told me that then you get the leasing car, but if you go to work three years in Germany as a software developer, you are not gonna have the C-class Mercedes and uh, build your villa on the split riva here. Because this, like, the living cost is everywhere much higher than again. So generally in IT and also compared to what was in Poland, Polish higher salaries are maybe, senior salaries are a bit higher, 
mid-level and juniors pretty much the same as here. But uh, that's the thing that it doesn't necessarily money-wise make sense to move Helsinki from here. Depending what you want from your life, of course. But, uh, but that's like everywhere. Everywhere, if you compare the average salary level, IT, like devs, they are uh, double the average salary level. At least, if, if not here, actually triple, but yeah. What? Do you have a solar Not yet, but that's that's definitely uh, once we're gonna move. I mean, okay, now yeah, we are now nine people all together, and now I need to say this public at loud that if we're not gonna double the uh, amount of devs this autumn, then I'm gonna be disappointed. But like, it takes time, it takes work. Hopefully next year we reach 20 and maybe more even, but we will see. And then when we will get our office. I think we need to start to think about the sound as well. Okay, thank you. Thanks.